Today we will discuss the short story The Wood Rose by Aburi Chaya Devi. The Wood Rose is an interesting short story which reflects the intricacies of old people living in cities and how their feelings are ruptured by their offspring. It will make us realize that old people are always sensitive and have feelings. It also shows the relationship between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law and their way of thinking. Aburi Chaya Devi is a prolific feminist writer in Telugu and has in her works depicted the oppression and discrimination women face with delicate irony and a sense of humor. She is awarded the Central Sahitya Academy Award in 2005. Her short story collection Bonsai Batukulu translated into English by E Nageshwara Rao as Bonsai Life and Other Stories portrays the life of women who live mechanically under the control of family members. The Wood Rose from this collection depicts an emotional picture of an old widow and her helplessness through the symbol of Wood Rose. Having no work to do in the house, the protagonist makes the habit of sitting in the balcony every evening and watching the passers by. Whenever she goes into the kitchen to do something, her daughter-in-law Kamala does not allow her to do anything and asks her to take rest. During her busy days, when she wanted rest, no one allowed her a moment's respite from the unending chores in the house. Now, it is rest all the time till she is tired of it. When she was younger, she was thinking being old would be a very happy time. Relaxing in an easy chair, playing with all the grandchildren, telling them stories, gossiping with neighbors, nagging everybody in the house, supervising all and sundry. She had never thought old age would be so boring. Moreover, she has learned there is a big difference between growing old in the village and growing old in a town. In big cities, everyone is for oneself without caring for others. And when they do, there is no informal air or intimacy. Hence, she has chosen to watch the passers-by from the balcony. The mother once found Kamala planting the seed of some creeper and learns that it is of Udros. Being not heard of its name earlier, she gets curious to know how those flowers look like if they have any fragrance, if they uh, can be used for puja and so on. She wonders to note that they do not have any fragrance but look beautiful and won't fade away if kept in a vase. Anyway, she does not like the idea to get flowers of no fragrance. She prefers to grow plants that give sweet-smelling flowers like jasmines, which can be decked into plates of women or else to grow vegetables, which can be cooked or given away to neighbors and friends too. With such an idea, she had planted a few vegetable seeds some time ago, which sprouted beautifully. But a few days later, she found no trace of uh, them. Though the son and the daughter-in-law said they did not know about them, she understood that they must have pulled them out, mistaking them for weeds. She observes her words nowadays have about as much value as a blade of grass. They do quite opposite to what she advises and they are a one in doing so. Other times they quarrel each other over trifles. The protagonist does not rejoice uh, the daughter-in-law's not letting her into the kitchen. After his return from abroad where he spent three years, the son is not able to enjoy the spicy food prepared by his mother. She cannot cook biryani or bake cakes like Kamla. 
the sweets and delicacies she used uh, to make have become old fashioned as are the adults so are the children ignoring her words and always spending their time reading comics once the protagonist finds kamla arranging in a vase uh, some shoots with roses uh, which were the color of sandalwood along with yellow and red roses she finds them strangely attractive in spite of being dry and brittle she learns from kamala they are wood roses and in that arrangement called ikibana she is mixing both fresh and dry flowers to show age and youth together the wood rose stands for old age and the fresh rose symbolizes youth the protagonist takes pleasure with the arrangement and says it represents mother-in-law and daughter-in-law together from then on the protagonist eagerly watches the wood rose creeper growing and spreading thickly uh, up to the terrace wall and getting dotted with pretty bell-shaped yellow blossoms she develops some strange affinity with the creeper and eagerly waits for the wood roses to bloom inside the yellow blossoms one sunday she goes to the balcony and gets astonished to see her son cutting down and pulling out the creeper though she shouts at him he doesn't pay any attention she goes to kamla and requests her to do something to stop her husband from cutting the creeper but kamla simply mutters that he would not listen to her the protagonist again goes to her son and requests him not to pull the creeper but quietly she moves away on his shouting at her she recalls how affectionate he was as a boy and how he never used to bear even a casual remark against her from his father that night at the dining table the mother again asks her son the reason for pulling out the creeper he carelessly replies that the creeper had become a nuisance covering the veranda grill blocking the light into the hall and spreading all over the window of the room upstairs he further says the creeper might have crept all over the terrace ready to cover up the whole house though it had flowers he says it also had mosquitoes dumbstruck the mother goes away and lies on her bed flooded with a stream of thoughts she could not sleep the wood rose creeper fills her mind and uh, she feels a lot of pity for it she imagines her own situation might be the same in the future and she gets scared of it she feels the affection between two people should not grow as thick as that dense creeper if it grows the youngsters may cut it off and throw it away but they fail to establish a bond between the past and the present they have got so used to new lifestyles and the culture gap is so dense that their coming back to tradition is almost impossible having lost their husbands the poor widows sacrificed their entire lives for the growth of their sons with a hope that their future is all for their sons hence they cling to them as the mother in the wood rose feels mothers only know how to cling and entwine all round the others finally they understand that they are left with only the memories like the dry and brittle wood roses with no fragrance or freshness or color the widows too are deprived of happiness or joy at their lives wind escape ready to break any time with frustration the stories are woven around the most sensitive and enduring bonds of the family they explore the distance created by education and cultural displacement and how the younger generation is fascinated by the west or its culture 
and how the older generation is affected by it. The subtle and miserable change from familial closeness to a kind of polite distancing, the shameful contempt of younger generation for its elders forms the theme of the story. Thank you.